Chunk, 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 Hi everybody, John Yasa here, and we're back with another edition of Practical MDO. There are lots of things that are different from the last time we talked. I got a haircut. I'm getting over a sore throat. I hope you can hear me. But let's talk about today's topic, which is a brief intro to derivatives. Now, if you've been doing MDO for a while, you probably already know about derivatives. And even if you haven't been, you might already know about derivatives. It's all about calculus. It's all about some of the basic mathematical ideas behind what derivatives are. But I want to take this lesson as kind of an opportunity to anchor everybody, to get everybody on the same foundational page about what derivatives are and what they mean. So I'm not talking about financial derivatives. I don't know anything about that. I'm not talking about a derivative work of art. Let's talk about derivatives in this sense, in the optimization sense. So derivatives are necessary to effectively guide gradient-based optimizers and Newton solvers to the correct answers. Now you could do optimization without derivatives, but it's generally not efficient. And now their lectures go into more detail about that. Today, we're just talking about what derivatives are and what they mean for you to do optimization. This, of course, falls within the differentiation subcategory of this course. So first, again, I just want to anchor everybody. Let's talk about what is a derivative. It's easy for me to think about a derivative as kind of the slope of a function. The derivative is the change in the function with respect to x, the change of f per change in x. Let's just plot out a simple function here. Uh, maybe it's not too simple. It is a nonlinear function here. But we have y equals sine of x minus x squared over 20 plus x plus 2. Here's what it looks like in just kind of on a nominal plot. It's got a little bit of waviness. It's pretty exciting. And the derivative is simply the slope. The derivative is the slope at any point on this graph. And the derivative you can think of as a function where it varies with respect to x. If we were to actually compute the derivative, again, hearkening back to our calculus days, you can see here that, okay, the, the partial y partial x here is cosine of x minus x over 10 plus 1, you know, just taking the, the kind of derivative or differentiating that original function. Here we can plot the derivative as well and see kind of how it changes. Now let's zoom out here, do something crazy, and look at both of them at the same time. I, I think it might behoove us to kind of trace this as well and follow specific values. So here at the top, as we see the kind of tracking the function value, we see the slope changing, the derivative value changes as well. I will go through this in kind of exquisite detail to really highlight what I'm talking about here. The derivative of this nonlinear function, as you can see here, goes negative for a little bit. And the value of the derivative function also goes negative. This is great. This checks out. Let's continue through this sweep and kind of see where it ends up. Okay, the derivative is a positive value now, and it's leveling out here. Here, I purposely stopped it when the derivative is zero. On the bottom graph, we can see, okay, the derivative value is, is zero. And at the top graph, we see, okay, it's kind of a flat line here. Okay, the slope is zero. This is great. This is all that I mean when I talk about derivatives or gradients or sensitivities. These are all kind of synonyms for the same thing. Now let's talk about a few different types of derivatives. And the ones that I really want to focus on in the delineation here is between partial derivatives and total derivatives. So first I'll introduce partial derivatives. These are sensitivities of the outputs with respect to the inputs for just a little block of your model, a little block of your code. These partial derivatives don't tell the full story. They're just little bits and pieces of the puzzle that you put together to get the total derivatives. I'm painting in broad strokes here, but partial derivatives do not necessarily consider implicit coupling. What I mean by this is that if you have a component here and a component here, and there's this feedback coupling loop, partial derivatives have no notion of that feedback coupling. They only know about what's in their little block here. They only know about what's within the little subsystem that they're dealing with. Now, let me introduce total derivatives. Total derivatives are the sensitivities of the entire system's outputs with respect to the system's inputs. In the case of optimization, this is what we care about, the functions of interest with respect to the design variables, so the objectives and the constraints with respect to the design variables. You can think of this as the full puzzle put together. This lets you see the full story of the system, its sensitivities, and by taking these little pieces, these partial derivatives, and combining them together, we can obtain the total derivatives, which we need for optimization. Now again, there are lots of different ways to compute derivatives, and I'm not getting into that here. I'm simply introducing the idea of partial and total derivatives. Let's talk a little bit about the, the pros and cons, the benefits and the costs of using derivatives. So I recommend using gradient-based optimization, and to do so efficiently, you have to compute your derivatives efficiently. I've shown figure 1.23 from the Engineering Design Optimization book before, and I will show it more and more because it's so 
compelling. Let's take a look at this. We have the number of function evaluations needed to compute an optimal point using a gradient three method in blue and a gradient based method in red. As we increase the number of design variables, the number of functional evaluations for the blue, the gradient free, grows a lot. It grows into a huge number. But the red, the gradient based, it was just a small number. It's beautiful. It's very low. That's great. So we should be using gradient based optimization because it's more efficient. And inherent within that, we need to care about derivatives. So I hope the, the benefits of using derivatives are clear, at least for optimization. But let's talk about some of the costs. So depending on how you're computing your derivatives, it may be very costly or not too costly. And it may be costly in a few different ways. I mean both the computational cost and the developer cost. It's a really good way to visualize the different costs associated with computing derivatives. Now you could use a finite difference method, which is very non-intrusive. It's easy to set up a way to compute your derivatives using finite difference, and you don't have to change your model at all. You can have a black box, in fact, perturb it and look at the outputs and how they change. This is very, very cheap in terms of developer time or implementation cost. However, the computational cost is relatively high because you have to perturb and run the model at each finite difference point. Additionally, in the grand scheme of things, these derivatives may not be that accurate, and thus your optimization may take longer because you have less accurate derivatives. Next up on this kind of spectrum of derivative computation methods, we have complex step. Here it might take a little bit more developer time because you need to make sure that your model is complex safe and that complex numbers can be passed around entirely within the model tracking the sensitivities. This is much like the finite difference method, but it results in much more accurate derivatives down to machine precision. So this may decrease the overall cost of your optimizations by providing much more accurate derivatives. Next up, we have algorithmic differentiation or AD. It's also known as automatic differentiation. The whole idea here is that you can give your model, your code to a computer, and it will differentiate it for you either through source code transformation or operator overloading, it will allow you to generate some code that actually computes the derivatives. Now I have this as a slightly higher implementation cost, and this is because a lot of models, I claim the vast majority, are not ready for AD right off the bat. You may have to massage some of your data types, some of your arrays, some of your handling, heck, even your operations, to make sure that it's safe for AD. Some codes, like Julia, are better at producing ADable codes than other. However, if you're working in Python or Fortran or C++, it, it might take some effort to make something that is algorithmically differentiable. But if you're able to do this, you can greatly reduce the computational cost needed to compute your derivatives. Just a second, a cat's trying to get up. Oh, good job. Hey, don't drink my water. Don't drink my tea. My apologies for that interlude. So back to algorithmic differentiation. It has a lower computational cost than finite difference or complex step because you have code that's actually producing the derivatives. Now this is very problem dependent and very code dependent because the code that's actually computing the derivatives might not be that efficient or it might be very efficient. Again, it's automatically generated code from computers. They're not necessarily focused on the most efficient way to get an answer. And then lastly, here at the far end of the spectrum, I have analytic derivatives. This usually takes the most amount of developer time. You have to sit down with a pen and paper or Wolfram Alpha or chat GPT nowadays and compute the actual expressions for your derivatives. This hopefully has a much lower computational cost because you have a very straightforward path of computing the derivatives through a series of code or expressions. However, you can imagine that it takes a lot of engineer or developer time or a lot of you know, very intelligent use of machine learning or automatic tools to kind of put together these analytic derivatives. But we have a different lecture and I'll link it in the description below that goes into more detail about all of these. I simply wanted to highlight the different implementation and computational costs and kind of show them on a spectrum here. This spectrum is, is just a notional spectrum. It's without units. These are all relative and it's very problem dependent. But I wanted to bring this up because if I'm talking about derivatives, I need to talk about a few of the different ways to get them and some of the pros and cons and costs and benefits of using these derivatives. So again, this is a super brief intro. I really want to motivate the idea of efficiently computing derivatives and how that helps you perform good optimization. And I also just want to showcase a few different ways you can compute your derivatives and explain the differences between implementation and computational cost. Many other lectures go into more detail about topics introduced here, and I hope this is just sort of a launching point for your foray into derivatives. If you've liked what you've seen today, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. And guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thank you for watching. Bye.